Hey, this is Peter and Dave Cruiser with Sons of Silver, and you're listening to Nothing Shocking Podcast. We're putting the band back together. The numbers all go to 11. I'm talking about bands that rock. Led Zeppelin. What about Sabbath? ACDC. Motorhead. Does that mean it's louder? Is it any louder? Well, it's one louder, isn't it? We're not worthy! We're not worthy! Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. I get up above the ground and raise my head days like this. Think I should be dead. One for Satan, two for me. Let's cheat the devil. It's fun. Welcome to the Nothing Shocking Podcast. I'm your co-host, Jeff Unteed, and with me in Dog Bowl Studios is my co-host... Coach Nez. You can find the Nothing Shocking Podcast on Libsyn or any pod catchers. You can find us on Facebook or Twitter at No Shock Pod. You can also find the Nothing Shocking Podcast on Rock Rage Radio every Tuesday evening at 10 p.m. Central Time. Our sponsor is Ragged Records, located in beautiful downtown Rock Island, Illinois, soon to be returning to a beautiful downtown Davenport, Iowa, right across the cross the Mississippi River. Blah. Anyway, uh, our guests tonight are... Uh, the band The Sons of Silver, featuring Peter Argaropoulos and Dave Cruzen. Yeah, and uh, these two fellas are of um, past uh, fames from, uh, notably, we've had Dave Cruzen from Pearl Jam. Yep, and Candlebox. Candlebox, and Pete Argaropoulos from... Uh, he was in the band the last December in the late 90s. Yeah. So uh, two very progressive musicians with great stories, great information. I think we kind of caught them off guard with a couple of the questions. Yeah. I think they weren't really prepared for our complex questions. <laughs> That's okay. No, it was fun. And we really appreciate them. It's a really exciting new band. Uh, they got a uh, um, pretty good rock sound coming that something kind of a little jolt that we need right now, I think. And Yeah. And uh, the new EP is Doomsday Noises. Yeah, Doomsday Noises. Uh, it's a digital EP out there on uh, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your digital. And I don't quite remember, when did they say we should be expecting a hard copy of Doomsday Noises? Did They're they, hoping did they sometime say? next year. They didn't give an exact date, but just hoping in 2021. Ah, very good. Yeah. All right, well, um, we want to thank the Sons of Silver for sending us band merchandise for yeah. their involvement with the Nothing Shocking podcast. So that was very generous of them. We want to give a big thanks to them and their management team. Um, with that being said, is there anything else that we need to share? Uh, just they have a couple other, uh, uh, what do you call that, digital singles out there, uh, Never Enough, uh, their newest one, Quarantined in California. They also shot a promotional video for um, Check them out. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, as we could hear in the distance, my wife yelling for the dog. <laughs> so everybody heard my wife yelling for our, one of our dogs. But anyway, let's get to this interview tonight, and uh, I know that's about it. All right. Good night. Good night. For more information on Sons of Silver, go to their website, sonsofsilver.com. They have a live stream coming December 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific time. Hello, Peter. Yeah, Eric? Yes. Cool. All right. Hey, I got Dave here. Hey. Hi, Dave. How's it going? Hey, good. Welcome to the Nothing Shocking Podcast, uh, uh, Peter and Dave. I'd like to introduce you to my co-host, Jeff Unte. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, thanks for having us. Very good. Well, let's get right in the first question here, um, and I guess maybe you guys can maybe take turns as the questions go on, decide who wants to answer what question, but uh, with uh, COVID-19 being at the forefront of everyone's life, um, how have you both been dealing with the pandemic professionally and personally? Uh, well, I'll, I'll jump on that first then. Uh, professionally, uh, we've, uh, you know, we, we, like everyone else, we were pretty hunkered down for the first few months, uh, communicating, you know, in traditional ways, phone, text, and the likes. Mm -hmm. We even uh, managed to uh, remotely record a song, which was the first for us, uh, a song called Quarantine in California, which... I sort of sketched out on acoustic guitar, sent over to Dave, and before I knew it, Dave had sent it off to Adam for some bass. Adam had sent the tracks to Kevin for some guitars, and Kevin got it back to uh, Breen and I, my wife Breen is our keyboardist and engineer. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were able to uh, 
make a song, get it out, and, and uh, you know, get a nice little thing to do during this crisis. And uh, and then, you know, that sort of got us back into saying, hey, you know what, we got to push through this. And we got back in the studio. We've been in the studio since uh, since July working on uh, on a bunch of new tracks that we're going to be putting out uh, next year. And um, personally, you know, uh, just like everyone else, sort of just going with the flow right now and uh, taking each day that comes and and uh, looking forward to uh, some degree of normalcy and getting back out on the road. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, for some of our listeners that might not know, uh, who are the members of your band? Uh, I guess you want me to take that one, Dave? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so there's myself, uh, Peter, Peter Argeropoulos. I'm the lead singer and uh, play uh, guitar. And uh, there's Dave, Dave Cruz, and our, our drummer. And uh, there's uh, Adam Curry, our bassist, uh, Kevin Holland, lead guitarist, and uh, Brina Kabler, our uh, keyboardist. Nice. Oh, very cool. Um, your newest EP is available on uh, Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Pandora, and Deezer. Uh, will your fans be able to uh, purchase this EP as a tangible product as far as you know, ordering it through uh, online or maybe at any existing record stores that are still out there? Yeah, we, we expect to have uh, vinyl and potentially CDs in the spring. Uh, since it was an EP, we've held off on... Uh, it was being an EP and not being on the road, we've held off from any producing any physical for right now since you know nearly everything is consumed digitally these days, digitally being through Spotify, Apple Music, uh, YouTube, so on and so forth. Um, but again, once we get on the road, we'll have, we'll have some physical with us, some, some stuff that people can, you know, sort of add to their, uh, add to their, you know, their bookshelf and the like. Oh, very good. Um, this is kind of a, uh, more of an argument as far as the EP versus LP, um, these days when releasing new music, it seems to be, you know, a hot topic. A lot of bands are, releasing EPs instead of full-length LPs. Uh, it just seems like it's more economical, I guess, maybe for this present time, or a lot of bands are just releasing uh, online singles. Um, where in the landscape of everything with this, with this, I guess, besides COVID-19, but just music industry being the way it is, how do you see this being a, a way for the Sons of Silver to produce music? Would it be better to do it? more EP-ish or by singles or is the goal to release full-length LPs for you guys? Um, I don't know. Do you want to take that one, Dave? Or do you want me to? Do you want to take turns on it? Well, um, I mean, we just, we had some stuff ready to go for an EP, right? So we just kind of stayed on that track just because um, isn't that right? Isn't that last yeah. couple of things yeah. we've done it just kind of worked out um, better um, timing-wise. Yeah, yeah I mean, it seems like it's it's easier to digest for the industry. Um, it's it's easier for fans to, especially for a new band, a new act to to you know to digest uh, as opposed to giving them a full length, which you know rarely do people ever sit and listen to a full length these days. And uh, for us, like Dave was saying, um, you know, we had a, we had a group of we actually had about a dozen songs to choose from for for the Doomsday Noises EP. Uh, but we, we narrowed it down to a, a batch that we thought was, was going to be a good first representation of us. And, and that's not even necessarily the, the, all the best songs that we had to choose from, but just a good first step. And, uh, and so that's what we had and that's what we went with. And now we've got a, another batch of you know, 10, 15 songs to choose from for the, for the next EP. And in fact, Breen is in the other room right now because I'm at the studio today and, uh, she's, she's mixing, um, She's mixing uh, some of those tracks right now. Awesome. I guess maybe on the on the outside of Sons of Silver, being the industry what it is, do you see artists, bands such as yourself or in, in any genre, maybe gearing themselves more toward the EP format these days or in the future? Um, considering you know full length LPs are more expensive to make, and being what physical copies are, they don't sell. Like they used to, just the sign of the times. How do you guys? I still have the CD. Yeah, me you, too. I hope you stick with it. <laughs> How's that work out for you guys? I don't know. What do you we've think? Talked about? Well, we've talked about it. Um, like coming up with something more like um, 
not like a concept album, but we've, we've thrown around the idea of like having something that's like, you know, some longer songs and really like, uh, stretching some jams out or something like that and putting together, you know, if it fit together, if it was an hour's worth of, of stuff that really seemed to go together and like, we shouldn't break this up. It's like a set, you know, of music and we, we talked about doing it in that case, but otherwise, um, I don't, I don't know. We're, we really are, uh, we're just really cranking out so much music. And when we get together, we work. Like, I mean, we have a good time and everything, but we really get a lot done. It's kind of crazy, you know? And yeah. Like, We've got all this music. we got to put something out. You know what I mean? It's like, so that, but I agree with Pete. I, like, I like having, especially these days, like a little less to digest when I'm checking a band out. You know, like a couple of songs or four or five yeah. songs. To me, it's, it, it um, I'm really enjoying that just because the, the other aspect I think that goes along with it is there's so much more music right now, you know, yeah, than there yeah. used to be. There's so many more bands. I mean, it's exponentially grown, which is great. I think it's amazing. You know what I mean? It's like, um, I, I, you're gonna, you know, whatever. It's just the more the merrier. But, um, yeah, it's just kind of easier to take in, I think. Yeah, I, I, I agree, you know, and, and, and like they were saying, we've, we've definitely thrown around the idea of doing, uh, you know, some type of concept album or at least a, a batch of songs that sort of weave, uh, you know, from, from, from get go, they, they have a, we, we have an agenda, but we're, we've just been in, in a, in a mode right now. Where we're just cranking out songs that, that innately because we're writing them, uh, at the same time and we, we write collectively, they all, they have common themes to them. They have common feels, or at least in batches, we'll have like three or four songs that have a, a really, a really good synergy. Um, that, you know, we, so, so we sort of build our EPs around those and we stick to the EPs because of the digestibility, but also because we're really, we're so busy that to go and finish an album, um, and then do all the, the marketing around us and the artwork, the videos and the pr- press and things like that. It would be kind of overwhelming for us right now, um, to be honest with you. Yeah. So um, we want to stick to smaller batches, and we, we want to get up, get back out on the road as soon as possible. Yeah, very good. Very good. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I really love the the new Doomsday Noises EP. I've been having uh, a hard time getting it out cool. of my uh, off my phone playing this week. It's, oh, uh, awesome! Um, Thank you. Yeah, the uh, how do you classify your sound? I mean, it's, uh, Eric and I were trying to talk about that a little bit. We were talking yes. about rock and roll. You know, a little bit of uh, what do you, you call it, Eric? Uh, what do you want? The, the classification of yeah, rock and roll. Yeah, a little bit of classification. Where, how do you? How would you guys classify your sound? Rock and roll. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes, uh, that's what I, I would call it. That for sure. I love that. Uh, read them your read them their rights. Um, was there any story behind that? Story with read them. Uh, was that was uh, that was one of you know one of the typical songs that we we came up with. Uh, in the studio while, while jamming, I think we were, we were working on a, a batch of ideas that particular day and uh, there was sort of a, a pause in the moment. Uh, and, uh, I think Kevin and, and Adam were discussing an idea that we were, we were working on. And we, we tend to work quickly. We'll, we'll work on, on things for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And if it doesn't, if we're not really gelling with it, uh, either A, we've sort of segued into another idea naturally or B, we kind of shelved whatever we were working on and pick up something else. Um, but in this case, there was a pause and, uh, I, I started playing what was a very rudimentary version of, of the main riff, the da 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 thing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Dave, I don't know if you remember this day, but you just jumped in and just started going whack a whack a whack a doing the double <laughs> kind of thing on the snare there. <laughs> you know, and, and for me, I, I'm like looking over at Dave and I'm seeing like this, this image of Charlie Watts and, you know, the mid sixties playing satisfaction. And so, um, we, you know, next thing I knew, uh, Adam and, and Kevin had, had jumped right in and, and, uh, we were, we were off and running. And Brina, Brina is, uh, is not only our keyboardist, but she's also our, our engineer. So she's in the other room recording it all and getting excited. And, uh, I, I think we, we put really all of it together. What 30 minutes, Dave? Maybe. maybe yeah, that, that, that one really did flow quickly. It was nice. It's like, yeah. 
you know, you work really hard and, and uh, like we might like work on an idea for a while. I mean, yeah, right about the time we've decided to like just give it a rest, we'll go in and something will just like, you know, pop out of nowhere and it'll be like, boom. And then, you know, we've got something really tangible and in an hour. So it's great. And um, being able to record, I mean, when we, you know, we're not just rolling uh, Pro Tools, it's like we're, we're, we have such a, a great setup to record with. Um, yeah. It's, we're very lucky. So if we get something, pretty much it's, you know, the quality that we could then mix and put out. It's great. Yeah, which is a good point. In fact, on the, the, the newest batch of songs we're working on, um, we have a few songs that, uh, we're, you know, like we'll, we'll work out the song and we'll get it to a point where, okay, let's, let's make the best recording we can make of this for the day and then sit on it for a couple of days, absorb it, and we'll go in and track the final version after that. Mm-hmm. And it just so happened to be, again, in, in the last, the last couple of months here, a number of songs we worked on, uh, we, it was sort of the, the last de- demo of the song that we, that we, uh, lived, that we, end up keeping we're like we went back in and we're like eh, there's no way we can we can beat that the energy the vibe uh done moved on from there so that's that's kind of fun yeah we're days right we're really lucky that we can do that fantastic um i recently read an article about the band and it, the band was labeled on, on, on this internet website as la's alternative rockers and you know to me uh, i get tired of the label of, yeah, of, of you know earlier. of rock and roll of rock and roll all these ridiculous subgenres. we had uh tony demolition man dolan from venom on years ago and he, he's, he's so sick of the label he's like hey you know we are a rock and roll band we're just a heavy rock and roll band do you guys get tired of you know the the, the quote-unquote label this band has got to be an al- alternative rock band when i think of alternative band i'm thinking of bajas or something like that of the 80s you guys to me are just a kick-ass rock band so you know as far as labels go do you feel like it's kind of unjust to give your band a label just Say it's rock and roll, be done with it. Uh, I don't know. What do you think, Dave? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I I just I don't know. It's a good question, actually, because you got us both. Some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't really ever really think about the genre thing too much. Um, but I do remember an alternative became a thing. I remember that. Um, I well, I go way back, but I remember that. I remember an emo happened. I remember no, you know, right. I saw these these things and it's like and it's hard to keep up with I, I, I can't keep up with I don't know the terminology but yeah um, I don't really I don't mind alternative it's alright but then it you know it, it, it's this late stage like alternative to what you know <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but I don't mind I certainly don't mind that I, I'm alright with it and yeah. um, Bauhaus I mean that's very amazing so. I was gonna say that that's that you know look if they want to someone wants to throw us in a group you know in that group so to speak I'll take that not <laughs> yeah. that I think we sound anything like that nothing like that it's, it's a great compliment but I, I would add that to me I, I I personally don't really pay much attention to genres other than uh, for me I'm 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 dealing with a lot of the, the business end with with uh, our our label and so so mm-hmm. to speak so I have to handle those things a, a little bit more than I otherwise would would normally want to. And I just say, like, you know, we started out the show, and like we've said a couple times now, that we're just a rock and roll band for no other reason that it's, it's kind of, it's a little, it's a little vague, it's a little nostalgic, but it's also something that feels a little fresh again, because it's, mm-hmm. it's simple, you know, and, and, and in that case, in that sense, we are, we're simple. I mean, what you hear is, is what you see is what you hear is what you get with us. If that makes any sense. You have five people playing, each playing an instrument, a couple people singing, and that's it. And we put that mm-hmm. on our recordings, and we call it a day. And and it makes it so when we go to play live, or we'll make it when we return to playing live, that people are going to hear the the stuff as we recorded, just with the extra energy and and you know exuberance of playing live that's so cool yeah good job um one of the things i miss about the physical product is the the liner notes and the you know the artwork and stuff like that so with the digital copy it's a little a little harder to figure out but what what is your guys's writing process as far as uh writing credits or does does, does all the band members contribute or or is there a principal songwriter no we're we're we, 
we're all credited. We all, this is a, a group effort. I awesome. mean, no doubt. Anything else you want to leverage? <laughs> <laughs> Anything we, else? we split, we split everything evenly. We're common. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not for everything else. Don't anyone get any wild ideas. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that was the long pause. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now off to the next question. Sure. Uh, with the pandemic, pandemic being what it is, uh, it has strained bands recording process. Um, has the recording process for you guys during this pandemic, has it changed at all? Or with the use of technology, what it is, Dropboxing, um, email attachments, what have you, um, has it really made a difference at all on the way you guys approach the recording process? Nope. Yeah. No. <laughs> we're, we're super lucky in that sense. We can, we can say that for sure. No, it hasn't affected us really, has it? In, no. In, in a way... Okay. Better. Yeah, we've even I mean everybody being home, you know, it's, um, we really have uh, once again gotten a lot done. Uh, yeah, probably even more than we would have. Yep, uh, for sure. Yeah, yeah we, we're we're lucky because we have our own studio. We have a really nice mm-hmm. uh, studio, and it's uh, uh, you know, it's everything's. We all live relatively nearby each other, so we're all you know within. 30, 40 minutes of each other or of the studio. So we can, we can work every day if we want. And, and some weeks we do. Um, we just, we kind of go in and out. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of work a lot for a few weeks, get a bunch of songs together. Then we'll, you know, do some overdubs, some vocals, some mixing, and then we'll dive into the next batch. In the meantime, we squeeze in live streaming, we squeeze in interviews, so on and so forth. But, um, that, the built, the having the recording studio, uh, can't be, uh, it can't be un- under, underestimated, understated how, how significant it is for us. Uh, and, and, and likewise being, uh, nearby each other. Well, fantastic. Yeah. Um, you had touched upon the live streaming. Uh, we had Ricky Warwick on a few weeks ago, or actually maybe going on two months ago. <laughs> but, um, actually, he's doing that, uh, those, uh, living room shows that where he's playing them, uh, once a month. With like five dollars a ticket to go, you know, to watch them online. Is it something that you guys, you know, I guess, depending on this pandemic and how long it's going to last, is it something that you're entertaining doing as far as you know, playing like these living room shows where you can charge people five dollars to watch you guys play for forty five minutes or what have you? We we've done streams live. Yeah, we we've live streamed a couple times. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're we're not going to charge people yet. I mean, I think on a, I forget how many people we had uh viewing live on our first show i think it was around 500 uh you know live of viewers people actually watching us as we were performing uh that was uh the end of september um and uh then we did another one a few weeks ago uh at the end of october and uh i think watching live we had um around 750 850 people uh for that one maybe a little bit more but then um Within a couple of days, we'd had uh, we'd had around twenty thousand views, oh, and that was without any promotions behind it. So yeah, it's it's there for us. I guess we wanted to charge folks, but we we just really want to reach as many people uh, as we can right now. We know everyone's as hard pressed for cash as, as us, but uh, we'll ding them down the road. You know, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're not like I said, we're not true communists. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as far as the, those uh, social distancing live shows were. They are putting people like in pods, a group of you know four and five people. Um, is it something that you guys will consider as far as the, the pandemic goes? <laughs> How's that going to work for you? I'll, I'll let Dave take that one. He <laughs> <laughs> uh, stumped us again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no comment. <laughs> well, it's kind of weird because you know we actually we've had quite a few guests that have partaken in these. Uh, social distancing shows that will yeah. play a like a 500 seat uh you know venue and they're putting people in you know you know maybe have 100 people there and they put them in groups of four and five and i guess maybe artists are taking that something better than nothing is it something that you guys would I mean, ever, you know consider I, i'd do it i'd do it if it's like they're gonna play on this field and, you know what i mean they're gonna be like 300 people scattered around the hillside i'd be like you know Mm-hmm. I'd, do, I'd, I'd do it if Dave wanted to do it and everyone, you know, I'd, I'd do it. Yeah. 
I, I, I look at, you know what we could do? I've mm-hmm. thought about it. We could make it a political rally so we can have as many people there as yeah, we there want. And simultaneously, <laughs> simultaneously a vaccination <laughs> rally. Yeah. So, oh, I love a vaccine, man. So everyone oh, goes man. for a vaccine and for protest. And it's, and it's a non-denominational <laughs> political protest. So, and, and, and non-confrontational. That's, that's yeah. the thing. You can't confront and you have to be committed to nothing. And, and likewise, you get a vaccine and, and, we just we have a ten percent surcharge that goes to the band for the charge of the vaccine. Yeah, how's that sound? Uh, that sounds fantastic. Now, will people need to bring their insurance cards when they come to the I mean, show? Uh, <laughs> of, of course, I mean, you know, the government's going to foot the bill. Actually, so yeah. they should just bring their social social security card or ID. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. Jeff. Um, so you spoke earlier of your uh, quarantine in California remote recording. That was pretty cool. I remember I, I did watch that this week. And then I also, uh, today I saw a uh, Read Them Their Rights. You had a, a, like a live uh, video of that. Can you talk a little bit about your video recordings uh, as far as your process for uh, making a video for a song? Uh, for, um, for Read Them or just in general? Oh, just in general. Um, hmm. Any thoughts on that, Dave? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, no. I just, <laughs> just show up and do what I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, okay. Here, here's a bit of the story because I guess I did have to be the uh, unofficial producer, you know, taking the lead on on those videos. So, read them their rights. Yeah. That was uh, that was composite video, or I should say, a video comprised of live footage, uh, in particular footage that I grabbed while we were on stage. So I would take my phone out, my iPhone out at the end of a show, and I would video the crowd, and sometimes I would even hand my phone uh, to someone in the audience who I didn't think would run off with my phone, <laughs> and uh, being, you know, and uh, and we captured some footage that way, and then it was, uh, you know, some behind-the-scenes footage that we had gathered over, uh, over the previous time period uh, of us just shooting uh, stuff in the studio and the likes of that. So, frankly, that was in, originally intended to just be a, a promo video for, for press, uh, perhaps for um, booking agents. And uh, once it got in the hands of the folks at Universal, um, they were like, hey, we're going to release this. And I said, well, what, what, what do you mean release it? And then they said, we're going to release it as a music video. And I was like, uh, well, what about doing a real music video? And I said, this is a real one now. And next thing I know, we all knew it was out. So yeah. uh, that's how that happened. And for our latest video, um, music video, that is um, Deep Division, which was uh, just released, uh, I believe, on the, was it the 18th of, uh, of November. Yeah. Um, that was actually one that we all talked about ahead of time. And threw a bunch, around a bunch of ideas, and we had a, a concept for uh, it involved a lot of walking and being outdoors and the likes of that. And uh, clearly, that wasn't a very good idea because uh, being outdoors, walking <laughs> around a bunch of people in the streets, that doesn't that wouldn't be very easy to shoot in current times. So, <laughs> so when we when we brought the idea to our our uh, director and and uh, and uh, videographer, a guy named. Ryan Calavano, who's done all our lyric videos, by the way, uh, we 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 uh, threw away that idea and uh, came up with uh, the idea of sort of a um, we call it Twilight Zone ish type of vibe, an intro to Twilight Zone. And at that point, we were really all in his hands. Uh, yeah. He has a green screen and black screen at his uh, at his <laughs> home, and uh, we all went over there one afternoon and basically. Uh, said, Ryan, do your thing. You kind of know what we want, and that was it. And, and, and so it really gives him a lot of credit, as well as Brina, for overseeing the project. Well, I said that Dave and I had very little to do with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> very cool. All right, so we have one last question for you. This is a curveball question. And uh, so today, I hope you guys are ready. This is a tough one. We only <laughs> like fastballs. We love baseball, but we like fastballs a little up, you know. <laughs> This one's going to come in really tight inside. So, hey, are you ready? <laughs> All right. Uh, today, Neil Peart's 2112 drum kit has gone up for auction on eBay. Uh, the owner, I b- believe he's from Chicago, he bought it for uh, $25,000 about 10 years ago. 
Um, he, the owner's hoping to get uh, a hundred thousand out of it uh, soon. Oh God! Yeah. Um, so that being said, since we have a drummer on yeah. the on this interview, what are your thoughts on this piece of rock and roll history? Is it is it worth a hundred thousand dollars? It's worth what. Ever somebody's willing to pay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. Well. well. Yeah, man. If you can get a hundred grand for it, good for you know. Good. It's the twenty-one twelve drum kit. I mean, if I were you know some, if I happened along some, I'd buy it. <laughs> if I if I had a spare. Uh, but yeah, that's a, that's that's steep. But see, to me, it's like. You get a drum set, you get all this stuff. People are buying guitars for more than that, and it's like, it's just a guitar. And you're not going to play, you're going to stick it under your bed. So, in that sense, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know it was... It, uh, it, go ahead. Oh, no, no. I say, if, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of with Dave. It's, it's, first of all, the price is whatever someone's willing to pay, and if you and, can afford and, it... Go ahead and you're going to play that kit. You know what I mean? You're not going to not play that kit. You're going to be, like, learning... Every fill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can, so. Yeah. I mean, think about it this way, too. If you get, if you get inspiration out of it, that let's, let's say you're a professional, yeah, man, absolutely. right? Yeah. Even, even if you're not, but let's say you get some type of inspiration from that particular instrument and you, you, you blow out a bunch of songs or pieces of ideas that become songs out of it and, and you quote unquote profit from them. Well, at that point, it's a, that's a really good thing because the drummer, the, the, the drum set probably retains its value and you, you know, you've made some money by creating all these new songs out of it. So uh, it can be a win-win thing. Now, I, I would say this. It's also, it's a very high grade problem to be able to go and pay for a hundred, pay a hundred grand for the drum kit. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, um, that was the last question we had for you guys yeah. for the evening. We want to thank you so much for your participation. Um, before we let you go tonight, is there anything that we did not cover for promotion or plugging for you guys? Is there something that we forgot? Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. You, Dave? No, huh? No, no, that was that was very thorough. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, fantastic. Um, so this is how it's going to work. We have about uh, two interviews ahead of yours. So we're looking at about two and a half weeks before this uh, will be all edited. Jeff here is our editing wizard. And uh, when it comes out, um, I will send the link to you, Peter, right away. That way you guys can have it. And please share it wherever you can. I'll also send it to your PR people. And uh, like I said, we want to thank you so much for your participation, both of you. Yeah, we're really enjoying the new no. band and looking forward to uh, what, uh, huh? what you guys got coming in the future. Thank Thanks you so, so much. much. Yeah, we really appreciate it. It's great to be on your show. You know, I'm glad. I'm Definitely. glad to your guys. Your show is uh, growing so fast. It's, it's awesome to hear. Oh, thank, yeah. thank and, you. Yeah. You know, congratulations. I want, thank you. Yeah, I, I want to add. Uh, we'd love to send you guys some uh, some sons of silver swag. Fantastic. We want to th thank you so much yeah. for that. We appreciate it. Very excited. Sounds good. Awesome. Thanks, I guys. appreciate it, man. Yeah, we really enjoyed talking to you tonight. It's been fantastic. Likewise, you guys. You right. do well. Have a great Thanksgiving and uh, hang in there. Yeah. Right. Happy Thanksgiving. We'll be in touch. We right. hope to see you guys soon. Thank, yes. you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye bye. Exactly.